Good morning, church. It is good to see you this morning. It's a pretty day outside today. God has really blessed us uh, with a beautiful day to worship him, and I'm glad that you guys are here. So let's just get right on into it. Everybody stand up and let's sing. One, two, three, four. be seated this morning church it is so good to see you good to have a great crowd hey remind you that we also have overflow crowd over there or overflow place if you feel more comfortable there uh, also our children are having children church this morning so we got a lot of folks spread out all over the campus but it is so good to see so many of you back it's just a good to be back in the house and all the church said amen it is so good to see you today hey just a few things real quick like we're going to get right back into singing i want to remind you that do we, we do have some prayer guides about the election coming up on tuesday uh, our local elections statewide and then also national so if this will help you it's just a christian's coalition on understanding what uh, what topics what things are big to you there's some big things to me involved in this election and so i want to know so if you come by you they're free just pick one up you're welcome to them. As you leave today, also on the, the large table out there, uh, Dr. Tim LaHaye came up with about 15 things you need to know about the rapture and the tribulation. 
And, and if it'll help you sit down and just read those rather than hear me talk about them, they're free. You can pick one of those up, take it home. It gives scripture references. Again, there, there's different uh, understandings about some of that with different people, but it'll help you at least have a general understanding of what's going on. Okay? Want to join everybody? Hey, do me a favor. Uh, all the folks, many hundred, to be joining by Facebook. Would you welcome them with a good yeah. thank you to the Lord Good Jesus? Amen. Good morning, Facebook. We're glad that you are here. Let me say, and, and many of the church doesn't know this, but last week all of your staff got a, an appreciation gift. This is Pastor Appreciation Month, a minister appreciation, really. So as, uh, as ministers, as workers here at church, we want to say thank you to our deacons, whoever did this. I appreciate it, Chris and, and Ken and, and Wendell and David and ever, who, all the deacons here, Tim. There's a lot of them. So thank you guys for blessing your staff. We appreciate serving you. Serving the Lord first, of course, but also that God allowed us to be here to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, just a few things before we pray this morning. Some of you may have heard, you may not, that Miss Doris Tunnel went to be with the Lord this weekend. I just got off the phone a little while ago with Gene. He's doing okay. Uh, they're going to move that service up to November the 14th. They have some family who can't be here immediately, so they're going to move it up. It's going to be a graveside, and we'll give you the information you need when that gets close and so let's pray for gene and gene if you're listening today we love you buddy and we're praying the lord would be with you and give you grace during this time also we uh, yesterday had the funeral for max barnett so please pray for that family miss amy ritchie where are you at sis would you would you stand up just a second miss amy has cancer on tuesday she'll be at vanderbilt for surgery and we want to pray for her and Amen. ask god to bless her we know that our god is able to do above and beyond what we think and so miss amy uh, we're just going to love you to the Lord right now and ask God. Um, I, I know some of you ladies, I know we're not supposed to be touching right now, but could some people just stand and kind of just point toward her way right now? We're going to pray for her. Thank you. People are already moving that way. We just want to pray for her right now uh, that God would give her grace and mercy. We have a lot of guests on campus today. We appreciate you being here as well, and may the Lord bless you as we worship and in the time of the word. So let's pray for Miss Amy Ritchie right now. I know there are others in the room like this. Maybe you have an unspoken. Would you raise your hand and say, Pastor, got an unspoken? Wow, okay. Let's just pray right now. Father, I pray for my dear sister. First of all, let me say I thank you, God, for doctors and nurses. I thank you for all the medications and all the medical things that, God, you provided us with to bring healing into our bodies. But, Lord, the Bible says ultimately that you're the great physician. And that, God, when the surgery is done with all that she has to have done, and it's pretty significant, we pray that, God, you would bring healing into Amy's body. Use the doctors, use the medication. But, Father, at the end of the day, we trust her into your perfect care. God, we're thankful that you know about this, you're aware of this. You've ordained that, God, she goes to where she's going. You put people in her path. And so we're praying now for healing, physically, mentally, spiritually. And I even pray, God, I know how this can be financially difficult for families. So we even pray for their finances, that, God, you would bless them. Thank you for her husband uh, by her side. Thank you for her children. So, Lord, again, for Miss Amy Ritchie, we ask you to bless her and heal her. Bring us back to us safe. For it's in the name, the only name, whereby we can be saved. In the strong name of Jesus. And all the church in agreement said, amen, amen and amen. Would y'all give the Lord a thank and pray for Miss Amy. God bless you, Miss Amy. The Lord be with you and bless you. Hey, due to all the stuff going on right now this year, we won't be doing any big Thanksgiving things. So, hope you'll understand that. We're glad you're here. Hey, one other thing for all senior citizens. How many senior citizens we got here today? Hey, uh, and Pastor Keith just... Uh, just I ain't some, a senior student. Don't I, did, I know. <laughs> hey, no, I know for some of y'all standing up a long time's hard. So if you have to sit down during the singing, it's okay to sit down. And all the seniors say... Jesus was right at me. All right. So I, I sit... Last, some of y'all last week were going, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me get through... Tri not tribulation. Help me get through the song service. Amen. In Jesus' name. So if you have to sit down, it's okay. It's not unspiritual. Okay? So... I, I know. Wow. Bless, you. <laughs> Bless you. I mean, I know being sick may have aged me, but God, good night. I, I, look, I know we can't hug and all that kind of stuff. So everybody stand up and go find somebody and give them a six-foot distance air hug, okay? And let's continue worshiping the Lord. One, two, three, four. With his heart open wide from the depths, from the highs, I will bring a sacrifice. 
about letting go of who we are and laying our lives down for Christ. And uh, on Tuesday of this coming week, um, a lot of people are going to be making some very important decisions uh, in our country. And as a Christian, I can't think of a better Sunday to lay your life down for Christ than today. Today. Get it right. Today. You know, I, I've heard people say, well, you know, you've got to vote for this and you've got to vote for that, and I'm not going to get on a political rant. But I will say this, I will say this, I believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that he is the Son of God, and I need to vote 
with that kind of commitment. Okay? Can't nobody help our world but Jesus. Oh, I got a song in my head, but I ain't going to sing it. I got a song in my head. So today, listen, today is a great day. Today's a great day to lay your life down for Christ. I'm not asking you to go to Africa. Your brother's in Africa today my brother, my in Kenya. In Africa I know. Right now. I'm not a- we're not asking you to go to Africa. Right. You know, I'm, that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm just asking you to come up to the altar or even where you are. Just say, God, I want you to take me and use me. Take me and use me. Be the king of my heart. Be the king of my heart today, God. And if you're already a Christian, wherever you are, just say, God, you know, I need to make a difference in this world in which I'm living in. Use me. Show me what I need to do and use me. Let the king of my heart control who I am and what I say and what I do. Let the king of my heart show through my life. Do that today. Do that today. And then when you get to the voting booth Tuesday, you won't have to worry about thinking about who you're going to vote for because your heart already knows. I like that, don't you? Your heart already knows. If it belongs to Jesus Christ, your heart already knows, already knows. I, it's so, I'm, just, I'm just glad to see everybody here this morning. L- last week was great because it's been a long time since we all got back together. And I've already had some people ask me why there's a chair up here. Well, that's because I still don't have all my energy and I still don't have all of my uh, lung capacity from having that thing. And he's a senior citizen. Uh, <laughs> that was not me. That was him. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> wow, I'm telling you. But anyway, um, let, let Jesus do something in your life today. Come on, sing with us. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king
you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. You're never going to let me down. Let's sing that. Oh, you're never going to let me. You're never going to let me down. You're never going to let me. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you are good good oh you are good good oh you are good good oh you are good good Yeah. 
Praise God when face to face we see. God, we thank you for visiting here with us today. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, God, for your mercy that was brand new this morning. Thank you, God, for your grace that sustains us every day of our lives. Thank you, God, that you are worthy to be praised. And God, I thank you for these families that are gathered here today. I don't know what's going on in each individual family's life this morning, God. But I pray something that has been sung this morning or something that's going to be said now will impact their lives today. I pray that there, I know there are. I know there's got to be somebody in this room today, God, that really desperately needs you in their life. And I pray today that you make a way to that person. Find that person. May your spirit have freedom to do and to convict and to whatever you need to do, Holy Spirit, you do it today. Like I said earlier, I can't think of a better day. I can't think of a better day than to lay your life down for Christ. Do it today. And God, I thank you for this pastor, Lord. I pray that you bless him as he speaks. I pray that every word he says, Father, will be anointed by you. And Father, when we leave today, please let us be able to shout. It was a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we love you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. And all the church said? Well, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Praise Team, and uh, appreciate that great singing. Hey, remind you, do you uh, Tuesday do the election? Uh, we're a voting place, and so there'll be many, many hundreds of people on campus, and so we've closed the office down, uh, even shut down Kids of the Kingdom. So there won't be anybody here Tuesday. If we are, we won't be uh, uh, noticeable. And so if you need us, you just call. Uh, call my cell phone if you need anything comes up. Again, we may be here, but we'll be in other places because if not, then it kind of gets uh, run over. So pray. Hey, hey, I love this verse of Scripture, Psalms 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And all the church said, amen. amen. So let's proclaim that Tuesday. Hey, turning your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 7. I'm kind of nervous this morning. I see Wendell Hutchins sitting out there. I see Dr. John Powell sitting out there, and I'm getting into some dangerous territory here. Hey, uh, Revelation 7 reminds me of a gentleman who, uh, whose wife got sick and had to go to the hospital. And the wife called the husband and said, hey, would you go home and get me a little bag of goodies like my makeup and stuff? And he said, sure, I'd be glad to do that. So he went and got some eyeliner and then we got some rouge or whatever y'all wear, what, you know, makeup stuff. 
Well, when it came to lipstick, he accidentally got super glue, and he put it in the bag. And so the wife did well. She came home, and somebody said, hey, how's your wife doing? So, well, I, I guess she's doing okay. She's just not saying a lot these days. And so some of y'all get that later, amen? Well, some of this stuff in Revelation is just, just tough to talk about other than, I want you to listen very carefully. Chapter 1 says, blessed is the person who reads this book. And we talked about how we ought to read it, we ought to hear it, we ought to keep it, and we ought to obey it. So, so because it is here, we want to dive in to Revelation. Now, in chapter 5, we went from heaven to earth. We talked about that in the throne room, and they saw the, the lamb who had the scroll. In chapter 6, he opens up the seven seals, or he begins to open up the seven seals. We discovered that the first four of those seals had a horse that rode with them, the white horse. We, we thought that was the counterfeit, the Antichrist. And then there's a red horse that, that brings death and a black horse with plagues. And then that pale uh, greenish horse that brings a lot of difficulties on the earth. And so we talked about last week, you can't stop those horses. You can't pray them out of here because they didn't come from hell. They came from heaven. They're God ordained with God authority. And so they ride through the earth, and according to Revelation 6 and the last verse, and let me read that for you if you don't mind so you'll understand. Listen to this, Revelation 6. What's going on, Pastor? For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And so these seven seals lead into seven trumpets. Seven trumpets lead into seven bows, and each one intensifying with dramatic difficulties on the earth. And we talked about why is God judging the earth, actually pouring out his wrath. Well, we, we talked about the fact that basically men are unresponsive to the gospel and unrepentant towards sin. And God's wrath is full. And now God pours out his wrath on this planet earth. Now listen carefully. You can't stop it. You can't pray it out. Uh, I, I, I still believe that the church will be in heaven. I think there's a biblical reason for that. And then God deals with the earth, not in judgment, but in wrath. We will face his judgment, but they're going to face the wrath of the Lamb. Now, don't you listen. You do not want to be here. And all the church said, Amen. you do not. And so in chapter 7, though, after five of the seals, he, he just kind of says, hold on a minute. I want to tell you something. I want to show you something. And he brings up an interesting subject. And there's a lot of discussion about this. Warren Wiersbe, John Phillips, Adrian Rogers, all of them had a little bit different slant. But there, there's a word here that I want to talk about today. Sis, can we go ahead and go to the screen? We're going to talk about God's evangelist. Hey, listen, God doesn't change. I don't care whether it's now or in the judgment or in the wrath period. God is always the same, and that is he would that none should perish. And even in this awful time of judgment and wrath, God is going to have his spokesman. God's going to have his men. Can you imagine 144,000 Pauls loosed on the earth? It's going to be massive. Uh, both of the guys that I listened to both said, and we might disagree a little bit, he said, I believe there's going to be a massive revival breakout on the earth. I'll give you a little bit of proof of that in just a moment. But God's going to use these 140. Who are they? Where do they come from? Well, the Bible teaches us that Israel had 12 tribes. And from the 12 tribes, God chose 12,000 people, 144,000 evangelistic Jews whom God called to touch and change the earth. Now, if you read through those, if you're a Bible scholar, we, in another setting we talk about it. Some of the tribes' names might be a little different. Levi, could it be in there? Manasseh, Dan, and some of those. We won't get into all that. I just want to talk to you about why God is using these men in the world in which we live today. By the way, if God is saving today, God will always continue to be God and do what he's doing. So let's read in your Bible. We'll read only the first five or six verses, uh, first four verses probably about this, uh, thinking about these 144,000 Jewish evangelists. Now, I want you to listen to your scripture, okay? So these four horsemen have ridden through the earth. They brought death and devastation. I mean, they, they have judged the world in wrath. But then look what he says. And after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Now, I want everybody to listen to me. I, I want you to look at your Bible, look at me for a moment. There are those today who are again believing that the world is not round, <laughs> but it's flat. And they use these particular verses because it said they, he's talking about the four corners of the earth, the north, the east, the south, and the west. And so we have those today. Now, if you've ever seen, seen a, a, a shot of the earth from outer space, it looks pretty round to me, doesn't y'all? Now, I'm from Mississippi. I could be wrong. <laughs> 
but <laughs> those who are saying that. He, he's speaking here geographically of the world in which we live. He's talking about the four, the north, the east, the south, and the west. And he says, they're holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east. By the way, the east mostly in the Bible refers to the city of David, that, that part of the world where, where we know that one day Jesus will come back, and I believe literally sit down on the Mount of Olives, going to split that place wide open. He's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. Now, I made a big thing out of this. I'm trying not to be political, but that's why I'm so thankful that Donald Trump moved the embassy back to Jerusalem where it belongs because I'm telling you, he did something in prophecy that the world just don't know what's going on. And, and, and I, I, you know, he's got a lot of other problems, but I thank God that he at least had the, the strength to do that. That was a big move. World doesn't even realize what's going on. What's going on? Well, God's getting everything ready. The east, the east is where it's all going to happen. So this angel came out of the east, signifying the city of God, the city of David, the throne of David. That's where Jesus will rule from. Then I saw this other angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Now that's big. The seal of the living God. Listen, just as the Antichrist has his mark, God has his seal. And if you're saved today, according to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, you have the seal of God on your life. And all the church said, yes. That's a big deal. I'm going to make a big deal out of that in just a moment. So remember that seal. What does it mean to be sealed? We'll talk about that. And the Bible says, uh, the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth. It's kind of like a peace treaty for a moment. He said, just stop. Just for a moment, hold off. God's got something else he wants to do. He says, stop for just a moment, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000. All the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So the Bible says, now, there are those who erroneously believe that there's another sect of people in America who they are the 144,000. Well, ask them what tribe they're from. That'll settle that pretty quick. Amen. Uh, you have to be a, and, and by the way, uh, up until AD 72, when Titus the Legion uh, walked into Jerusalem and destroyed it, the, the Jews could actually trace their ancestry back all the way to Adam. They had records that they could trace who they were in their blood lineage. That's why the Bible makes such a big deal out of that. So-and-so begot so-and-so, and they could trace their life all the way back through Moses and Abraham. But when Titus the Legion came into Jerusalem that day, he destroyed all those records. But I got good news for you. God's got a good memory. Amen. Amen. God knows exactly who they are, where they're from. And so God will seal these 144,000 people who will be his evangelists in the world. They will do the work of God even in the midst of great tribulation and wrath, and God's word will still be proclaimed. So let, let's just look at some things here that maybe God will... Matter of fact, turn to Ephesians chapter 5, because I just want you to see this, and then I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go off on a tangent. Y'all all right with that? Yeah, Y'all just get ready. Um, I'm just going to talk from my heart today. Ephesians chapter 5. I, I think this is good. You need to see this. Uh, but li listen to this. Uh, he's talking about how wives love husbands and husbands love wives and so forth and so on. And then he says this, and, and I want to read several here. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined his wife. Now watch what he says. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the what? The church. The church. Nevertheless. Now, notice carefully how he uses this relationship between the husband and the wife in relationship to us as Jesus is the head and we are the body. So, husbands, love and respect your wives. And as we, as God's children now, we have the same responsibility to make sure that we live in such a way that our lives show other people that Jesus is the head, the Lord of our life. And so, in, in retrospect of this, Turn to 1 Thessalonians, and then we're going to stop. I want to show you two words here that God just kind of spoke in my spirit the other night when I got thinking about this, what, what's going to happen in the future. I, I want to give you four lessons this morning, if we can do that, Miss Lisa. We, we're going to show four things I want to talk about in the following weeks. We're probably only going to get through number one. Number one, God's power is enough. Do you believe that? Yes. You need to think about this. God's power is enough. 
When God called these evangelists, God sealed them. So what does it mean to be sealed? I want you to think about that for just a moment. The Bible says when you got saved, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The same, and I'm going to use the word seal as the touch of God on our life. By the way, when God seals something, he has the power to keep it. That's the word I want you to see today. Well, pastor, what about all these horsemen? What about all the death? What about all these plagues that are going to come on the earth? I'm telling you, God has the power to keep us even in the midst of an absolute world that has gone crazy. And by the way, we're getting pretty close. But this idea of what God can do, what God will do, and what God wants to do. By the way, and I just want you to hear my heart for just a moment. Just think about this. If God wants to do it, he can do it. You say, Pastor, that just don't make sense. Well, read 1 Thessalonians 4 with me. I'm going to show you something, and then I want to make some connecting. I promise this is going to make sense when we get through. So turn to 1 Thessalonians. By the way, this is where we started this study. Remember? Um, he can or he cannot do it. Let, let's go ahead and put the wet wristles up there. He will or he won't. Either God can or he cannot. Either he will or he won't. Either he is or he's not. Now, what, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, we'll look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and just hold that shot right there for a while, sis. Look, look what the Bible says in your scripture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by not any means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend. Do you see the word will right there? That's a promise. That's a certainty. Matter of fact, you can interchange the word shall, will or shall. Now, I want to ask you a question, church. Is the Lord coming back? Yes. Bible says he will, he shall descend. And by the way, if you read in the Greek here, he says, and nothing can stop him from coming back. Praise God and the Lamb forever. Amen. So, so. For this we say to you by the word, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise. So let's just take this for a moment. God's power. The Bible says that when we die, we rest in the Lord. Yesterday I was at First Baptist Florence, my dear friend Kevin Johnson had to preach a difficult sermon or a different funeral for Max Barnett, 53 years old, great guy, love the Lord, just a tremendous man of God. And yet, I want you to listen very carefully. When we die, we don't die as others who have no hope. We die as those who live in hope because the Bible said the Lord will resurrect those who die in Christ. Now, preacher, what does that have to do with 144,000? It's got a lot to do with it. Because the same God who gave that promise then is the same God who's going to keep the promise in Revelation chapter number 7. Did you know the Bible says God would that none should perish? And so God's given us these promises to remind us that he's going to rapture the church. He's going to resurrect the body. And I got good news for you. He will reunite the body of Christ in heaven, the people of the living God. Amen. He not, he not maybe, not hope so. The Bible says I will. You need to understand that. Matter of fact, go to 1, Thessal uh, 1 Corinthians 15 one more time, and then I promise we're going to get back to Revelation. I want to show you a point here about God's power with all of this stuff going on. Boy, this word will and shall really just got in my spirit. So either God can do it or he cannot do it. Either God can resurrect and reunite or he can't. Either he will do it or he will not. He said he will, and he who said he will will do it. That's important. So let's read the Bible together. Now, I want you to notice the word will and shall. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not. All, we shall not. So that teaches me this, that there are going to be some people alive when the Lord comes back. So we shall not all sleep. Be asleep. Notice God's promise that always connects to God's power. We shall not all be asleep. Now look what he says. But we shall be, would you say that word out loud? Changed. I want you to think about this for a moment. In a moment, twick and the last trump, but the trumpet will sound. Will sound. Will be changed. He goes on and on 
helping us to understand that the same God who said it is the same God who can do it, will do it, and is going to do it if you, you by faith will trust in him. And I think the church today has lost our hope in understanding the God who can, the God who will, the God who is, is the God who promised it. And the same God who's going to seal the 144,000 is the one who is working in the world today. And we need to respond in faith like a husband and a wife, the Lord, the head, and we live for him. So now go to Revelation. All that to tell you this. God has the power to do what he needs to do. God's power is enough. His promises are real. His peace satisfies, but his purpose is going to keep us in the midst of difficult things. So go back to to Revelation chapter 7. So, Pastor, why would God choose 144,000? Because, first of all, he can. He's God. Hey, the thing I like about the Lord is this. He doesn't call business meetings. Aren't y'all glad? (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? Let's have a business meeting. Let's pray about it. Aren't you glad God said, hey, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. Amen. Now, from Pastor's standpoint, you've got to appreciate my standpoint. Amen. It's going to happen. But if you don't understand the God who can, the God who will, and the God who is, then you're going to miss everything that God desires to do in your life now so that when that time does come, and it's going to come, the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. Those of us who are alive and remain shall be changed. And that God in Revelation chapter 7 is going to call 144,000 flaming, fiery evangelists because he can, because he will, and because he is. And God is literally, now I want you to hang with me for a moment, and we can disagree a little bit here, but I'm going to tell you, God's not through just because the rapture's taking place and just because the, the tribulation's here. God is still going to be God doing what God does next, and that is love people. Why is he going to do that? Because he can, he will, and he is. And he has the power to do it. So read with me in your Bible. We're going to read a few verses now. So let's go back and read that verse. So he says, don't harm the trees. I want you all to stop for a minute. God's going to seal. The word seal carries with it the authority of the one who is in power. Now think about that. When Paul wrote this, he understood exactly the symbolism. When the king or when Caesar with his powerful authority, when he said something, he would oftentimes seal it with the governmental seal. That seal carried authority and it carried power. When you got saved, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. That carries with it God's power. Don't you think about this with me a moment. So when I got saved, God sealed me. That means that God's power is in me. Hey, here's a verse. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the what? The world. So the seal that God's going to seal these 144,000 with, whatever he chooses to do, carries with it the authority or the power of the one who is behind the seal. i got good news for you. When you got saved, God sealed you with the seal that nobody can break. Nobody can break. This is important, guys. And the church today, we're trembling and shaking and we're worried about what's going on when we have been sealed by the authority of the living God. The same one said, I will come. I will resurrect you. I will reunite you. The same one said, I have sealed you. And nobody, thank God, can pluck you out of my hands. Do you all understand what I'm trying to say? So these 144,000 flaming evangelists, Billy Graham's, Paul's, whoever we want to call them, they stand up and they have the seal of God representative of God's power. Wow. Well, Pastor, I thought that in Revelation, God's just going to kill everybody, going to be blood up to the horse's bridles. That's going to happen in the Valley of Megiddo. Vultures, I preached a uh, message here years ago called Buzzard Bait. Buzzard's going to come. I know that's gross. But there's a guy that works in Lowe's, and every time I see him, Pastor, I remember that message on buzzard bait. You scared me to death. It is going to happen. The trumpet is going to sound. The dead are going to be raised. Those of us who are alive will be changed. But also, God is going to do something in the earth that is marvelous. That if you and I miss this, we miss our purpose. God's power is enough. God's promises are real. His peace satisfies But God has given us a purpose. And so here are these 144,000, 12 tribes represented by 12,000 people, and they're doing the will of God. This seal. So I want to back up with the time that we have. God called Abraham. Y'all remember that? And God says, I want you to be my representative. I want you to leave where you are, and I want you to go to another land, 
and you're going to establish my covenant. Listen, God gave Abraham a, pro a promise and a covenant that sealed who he was. It's a seal. It's the touch of God. Did you know that the one most singular thing you and I have going for us today is that we have the touch of God on our life that makes us different? And only God and God alone can seal us with that power and authority. Moses was called by God. Moses was a stutterer. Moses lived in the backside keeping sheep. He's just a shepherd guy. And God says, I want you to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses said, God, do you know who Pharaoh is? And you know what God says? No, but Pharaoh's fixing to find out who I am. <laughs> That's the lesson. No, but Pharaoh hadn't met me, Moses, but he's fixing to, and it's not going to be good. Did you know Moses had the law that sealed him? Abraham had a promise. Moses had the law. You can go all the way down through Scripture. Noah, called by God to speak to a rebellious, re degenerate generation, and yet the Bible says God put Noah in an ark and put a rainbow in the sky, a covenant, a sign. I want you to understand something, church. I understand that we live in a world that is going crazy and it's getting worse by the moment. But I want you to understand, just like Abraham, Moses, and Noah, you have been sealed by the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's going to call these 144,000 flaming evangelists. Matter, matter of fact, would you look in verse 9? And after these things, now he names the tribes, and again, there's a little, uh, we just don't, if we were in a Bible class, we'd get into this, why, why is Levi mentioned, and Dan, and, and Manasseh not, just, that's really not pertinent to what I'm trying to say today. Look in verse 9, and after this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number. All the nations, all the tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. You remember last week we talked about the martyrs, their prayer? Remember those people under the altar? But the prize, they got a white robe. Now, let, let, let's just do a little thinking. Could these people be the ones that maybe heard the preaching of the 144,000 evangelists and even in the time of the tribulation gave their life to Christ and got saved? And the Bible said there's going to be so many people get saved during that time that you can't count them all. That is a possibility. Now, he could be speaking futuristically, a panoramic view, but the possibility here is that these 144,000 Jews have gone into the world preaching the gospel, and so many people got saved that you couldn't count them all. Hey, can I put it this way? So many people got saved you couldn't baptize them all. Wouldn't that be a day? I remember Sunday night here, we had a revival with Joe Carlisle, First Baptist Church Athens. I remember y'all were here. You may remember that night. We baptized 37 people. Do y'all remember that? I, I know that's been a long, long time ago. I got tired. I was baptizing them and kind of chunking them. I mean, I, I really, I baptized for a long time. And we kind of had a thing going, spring up, jump them out, spring up. Because third, I can't imagine baptizing hundreds and hundreds of people. Yet God said because of the power that these evangelists have been sealed with, the same power that you and I have today, there will be a throng of people saved, so many that, that you can't count them all. Matter of fact, keep reading. And I, by the way, I love this. I keep saying this here, and I hope you don't get irritated with me. I love America, but we're not any more special than anybody else. God loves Chinese just as much as he loves Americans. And all the church said, God loves the little Africans. God loves the Asian just as much as he loves you and me. Somehow we have this thing that we think we're special. We're number one. In God's economy, you're just another person he created who Jesus loved and died for. And if you get saved, you're no more special than the next person down the road that looks different, speaks different than you are. And he, he describes all these people. Now listen to what heaven's going to be like. All the nations, all the tribes, all the people, all the tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So somewhere in here, God has allowed the sealed 144,000 with the power of God that is enough. Either God can do it or he can't. Either he is or he's not. Either he will or he won't. But according to Revelation 7, verse 9, there's a lot of people going to get saved by the grace of God. Wow. You know, we all have what we think heaven's going to look like, right? We really do. We have some 
some emotional things that's probably wrong. I heard a guy down in Louisiana tell me, Brother Ron, he was a Cajun. Brother Ron, when I get saved, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to be sitting on that bank, be fishing in that. And he, he had heaven as fishing on a bank, catching crappies with his granddaddy. <laughs> and we got them worms. We put that worm on the hook. We put that. And I said, he's, he just, anyhow, I, it was a good thought, amen. Probably heaven's not going to be anything like that. But I'll tell you this. There's going to be people there from every tribe, every tongue, every nation because God has sealed these people to proclaim his word to the whole world. Wow. We don't have time. Matthew 24 says, and this word will go through the whole world. God's going to raise up 144,000 men who love him. I, I love the story when uh, the prophet Elijah thought he was the only one alive. Y'all remember that? And he, he had a pity party. Have y'all ever had a pity party? You know, it just takes one. <laughs> and he's in the cave. Oh, God, I'm the only one. I'm, you know, I'm the only one that loves you. Y'all remember that story? He said, just shut up. I love what, how the Lord, and by the way, God, the Bible says we're creating his image. I love to laugh, so God has to have a sense of humor. And God said, Elijah, I got 5,000 who haven't bowed a knee. Wow. Pastor, what, why this whole message? I want you to understand something, guys. With all the crazy that's going on, with all the unsettled, the anarchists that's going on today, you just remember this. If we've been saved and sealed by the power of God, and we have, the Lord has the power to keep those who belong to him. And in this difficult, dark hour, don't you think for one minute God doesn't know who you are, where you are, and what you need. Just like when God told the angels, hold the wind, stop the wind. I want to do something special in the world. I'm going to touch 144,000 men who haven't committed to the Antichrist, and they're going to change the world to whatever degree that is. I primarily believe God's going to use them to wake up the nation of Israel. I really believe they're going to be God's voice to that nation to call them back to Jehovah God. And they're going to discover that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But if we're not careful, we can forget who God is and what God can do. And we'll begin to listen to CNN and Fox and ABC and we'll begin to think, where is God in all this? I'm going to tell you, friend, he's a God who knows and cares. And God has his people in the world today. Just like he will then. So before you get discouraged, before you get defeated, don't you remember God's power is enough? I uh, was sitting at my house the other day, and uh, my son, who is almost 40 years old, I know I don't look that old, do I? Y'all are shocked. And my grandson now, who is 15... And my grandson has come to the age where he thinks he can Billy Bob bad, probably whip his dad. <laughs> it's just funny to watch. He, he'd destroy him. But he thinks, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about, all you guys out there? And um, my son said, now, Parker, when I was about your age, I thought I could whip my dad. And he and I had a little encounter. <laughs> Joshua just thought. That because he was 15 years age, he was so strong that I was just an old man. And can I just be honest with y'all? We just had a moment where we found out who was the baddest man on the hill. And can I tell y'all before God, he lost real bad. <laughs> it was, you know. And so now I'm watching him tell his son what I did to him. Of course, he, 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 he dramated it up a little bit. He's talking about blood everywhere. That, that, that's not true. It wasn't anything like that. But he had, you know, he was telling his son, boy, it, it, I, I just want you to understand something. God has never lost his power. It is not diminished. God has not wavered. And you and I today can understand that his power is enough. God is going to see us through. Can I remind you, the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will be raised. Those of us who are alive will be changed. And we will go be with the Lord forever. And that same God who's touched us and changed us. And if we want to use the word sealed, and I love that word, sealed. And there's three other words here that I don't even have time to get into. 
The word seal carries with it peace. Do you know who's got you in the palm of his hand? Carries the word with it authority and power and peace and protection. God's going to protect though. He said, hold the wind. There's a lot of other goes with this, but this is the only time we have. So either God can do it or cannot. Church, I want to ask you, you think God can do it? I do. By the way, can, will he or will not? I think he wants to. Will we let him? So God's going to call these 144,000. And God's going to allow the message to go out. Nothing will change from then to now or now to then. And the same purpose they had is the same purpose we have. And that is to let the whole world know God loves them and Jesus died for them. So he has the power to see us through, to carry us, to watch over us. I uh, have a little four-year-old grandson, and he's at that scary stage. You know what I'm talking about? You put him in his bed, I'm scared. Now, he, he knows how to manipulate. And he said, if you'll just turn the light on and let me get in bed with you, I won't be scared. That little rascal, he is something else. And so every night we go through the same thing. Grandpa, somebody, he calls me, Grandpa, I'm scared. I said, well, go tell your grandma. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. I, I want, I, why would you tell that, Pastor? Listen to me. God has never stayed up late worrying about anything. God doesn't have to have panic in heaven, special business meeting. Because his authority and his power is enough. And these evangelists that God will use, same seal they have, we have with us today. Children of, of God, our dear, dear child of, of God, brother and sister, don't you fret. Now, could I say this? I know we got to go. Brother Ron, are you concerned about world conditions? Yes. I'm not a foolish person. Are there things that are going on that, are, that concern you? Absolutely Yes. But either he can and will and is, or he cannot, he will not, and he is not. I think he can, will, and is. I'm going to trust him through it all. We sing a little song. You know what? He, holds the, he has the whole world, what? In his hand. I almost played this little song for you, but the little flesh side of me. Y'all remember Stevie Wonder, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours? Y'all remember that? I started to sing it for you. Did you know that you are signed, you are sealed, and you have been delivered? Not because of what you've done, but thank God because of what he has done. And what he's doing now, he's going to keep on doing until everything is through. You and I just need to understand, he can, he will, and he is. Will you let him? Heads about bowed and eyes are closed all across this room. Just a moment, we're going to have some playing. You're here today, say, Pastor, I am just terrified. I, I am just overwhelmed with anxiety about what's going on in the world. I understand. I go to bed at night. I fret. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about the, the safety. I understand. But I want you to know our God is powerful. He has the seal, or excuse me, we have God's seal in our life. And that seal carries with it authority and power. And God can do it. God will do it. And he is going to do it. Let's just be a part of it. So if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ by faith, maybe you'd like to come today and trust him. Would you want to do that today? Mr. Tim is over here. We'll go to a room. When this is over. Privately, we'll speak. Let's talk and share. Pastor, I am so fearful of everything that's going on in the world today. I want to assure you the same God who's going to seal 144,000 evangelists and touch the world is the same God today who can, who will, and who is going to take care of us. Maybe we just want to take a moment, pray for our country. As a matter of fact, why don't, why don't we just do that right now? Let's just pray. Father, I pray for America. Thank you for America, I thank you where we've come from. I thank you how you've had your hand on our life. Some are saying that this could be one of the greatest presidential elections in our history. I'm not qualified to say that. We know what's at stake. And so, Lord, I pray Tuesday. You said that you cause kings to rise and kings to fall. So Tuesday, we just submit 
to your authority. And we know that, God, you're in control. And, Lord, that on Wednesday morning, we know what we would like to happen, but if it doesn't, God, on Wednesday morning, you're still God, and we're still going to serve you. We're still going to be faithful. So I pray for this country. Bring us back. Help us to fall on our knees and get right with you. But, Lord, help us never forget that, God, your power is sufficient. Your peace satisfies your presence. So, Lord, today I want to pray for the family of God. That, Lord, your peace would be theirs today. That, God, we would know that you're with us. And that, Father, no matter what happens, it doesn't change who you are and what you want to do. And so, God, today, help us to know that you can, that you will, and that you are. Bless your children, God. And Lord, in the scary moments and in the dark moments, remind us that, Lord, you're there. Just like when my little four-year-old crawls up in my bed and for some reason, all his fears are gone. He thinks I can protect him from anything. I know you can. So keep us today. If you're here today, and again, you need to make a decision. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Brother Tim's to my right, your left. If you need to go and just have a moment, you want to talk and share, if you'd like to do that right now, just slip up and he'll take you somewhere privately. Nobody will know but you and me. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit. We pray again, God, your will be done in our country. But Lord, more than that, I pray your will be done in my heart and in my life. Thank you for your goodness and thank you for your grace. And Lord, one day you will come. You will come. Till then, may we remain faithful and steadfast in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. The church, it is, I'm like Pastor Keith. It is so good to see so many of you back. And I hope you'll invite others to come. Hey, remind you, two, three, hey, Pastor, come on up here, Keith. Uh, Ken, Keith. There, there he is right here. I don't know about you, church, but I appreciate this man. Ooh, Lord. Pastor, can you give me a word? Wow. I don't hear that every day. Wow. Uh, it, it, this man feeds us weekly, mm. and I just want to uh, let him know that the church family appreciates him. Wow. Thank you, brother. Brother, thank you. Amen. Yes. 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 Hey, true story. Thank, thank you, guys. I, and we're, we're honored to be here. True story. Uh, I was at pastor's conference about a year and a half ago, and we were talking about some of the pastors were having a lot of problems in their churches and things. And, and um, I, I've been here so long now. <laughs> Y'all guys going to fire me one day. But uh, I told them, you know, I can honestly say this. Um, I don't know a deacon in this church that I don't love and I don't think I couldn't go out and have a meal with and even go on vacation with. Not every pastor has that. And I mean this, guys. You have men of God in this place who make it easy to serve the Lord because of their love for God and their appreciation for you. And I want to tell you from my heart as your pastor, it is a joy and an honor to get to come here week after week and get to love Jesus and share the gospel with you guys. And uh, I just don't know how it could get any better. I am blessed beyond reason. And I know the staff feels the same way. So from us to you, thank you for the gift that you gave last week. You don't know what it means. But greater than that, the joy of serving the Lord with you guys uh, is just good. Pastor, Brother Ken, thank you, brother. And uh, thank you. Hey, just two or three real quick things. Some of the children are back in children's church. You do need to take them home with you. Don't leave them. We love them, but we don't want you to leave them. So please go get your children, all right? Hey, we're doing everything we can here to keep you safe. Uh, the building will be sprayed before you come and after you leave. We're doing all that. But safe distancing is up to you. If you want to hug when you get outside, that is your business. But, but just know that's up to you. And all the church said, 
I, I'm not going to have people out there with a gun <laughs> breaking. You do what you feel comfortable doing, okay? So as you leave today, we got a good crowd here. We're almost to maximum capacity in this room. So when you leave today, practice safe distancing, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I understand that, okay? I'm going to put my mask back on and do what I can, but uh, from here on out, it's up to you. And all the church said? Amen. Hope you understand that. So here's why we're going to do this. As you leave today, the offering plates are there. Thank you for your faithfulness to give. Uh, we'll only ex Hey, bro, we, we're going to close that door. We don't want them to go out that door. You're only going to go out that So the back row, please stand up only. Give them just a few minutes to exit. Then the next row stands. 